Welcome back to uh, the Merge TV. We're covering the North American Blockchain Summit. As we speak, we have Ted Cruz in the background talking about policy in Texas and you know this interesting place we're at. We've got Rajiv with us from Ardine, and he is a manufacturer of, uh, of machines that actually mine the blockchain for us. So uh, in a nutshell, you've got an amazing new product out. Yes, we do. Uh, thanks a lot for having me on the show. My pleasure, my pleasure. Um, so Aradyne is a company that builds silicon systems and software for blockchain and AI applications. Mm -hmm. Just recently, we introduced our new product line, the Terraflux uh, uh, miners with the world's best terahash performance, uh, with the best energy efficiency, which is very important because the cost of mining a Bitcoin is dependent on the efficiency of the systems but uh, very importantly we have interesting capabilities to tune the energy um, so that bitcoin miners can stop using or reduce the energy when consumers or industries need it uh, in a very granular fashion uh, and then we also have capabilities where these machines keep running under extreme temperatures very hot very cold conditions as opposed to uh, stopping functioning so that improves uptime, very useful for the miners. Oh, for sure, because it's all really, the math is, is everything when it comes to these things. And anybody that, that uh, if you're understanding the, the circumstances here, if anyone remembers any of the blackouts that we've had here in Texas, you realize that energy consumption for a corporation is not as important when you're worried about people's lives. And so you have companies like ERCOT or uh, you know Encore that, that tell these different providers that you need that consumption and the first line of first resistance in many places are utility companies and a lot of the bitcoin miners who also make money on that as well so how does yours compare to the existing architecture out there the existing architectures don't have this ability to modulate energy mm -hmm. uh without reboots mm -hmm. um and right yeah i hear that tends to be very damaging to the equipment that it's damaging to the equipment and, uh, the, you know, if you really want to bring this energy down rapidly, within seconds, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, you mentioned ERCOT. So we are working with the uh, Texas A&M University. Oh, wow, okay. Who is also engaged with ERCOT to try to see what else can be done uh, to make our uh, grids in Texas and around the country and around the world more resilient mm -hmm. to uh, the demand supply imbalance right. that exists for energy today. Yeah, and everything happens to be supply and demand. I, I understand that you have, you know, part of your your journey and part of your uh, your company's mission was basically trying to find diversity around, like as we all know, we like DeFi, we like decentralized everything. And part of yours is the decentralized supply chain. Yes, um, and Bitcoin certainly is the number one uh, blockchain in the world. It's the first blockchain, it's the most valued blockchain. And people pride on the fact that it is the only blockchain that the SEC calls uh, as commodity um, and it's decentralized, but there's an aspect that people maybe don't realize mm -hmm. is that almost 100% of the supply comes from companies that are Chinese-based companies. Right. And that's not decentralization, that's centralization, right? right. And, and while those products are good products, mm -hmm. I don't think there should be any one company or any one country where you should have a monopoly on right. this or centralization. And that's another thing that is uh, a mission for us to provide that uh, diversity. Oh, that's great. How, how did you, so your this product was actually fairly new, right? And so how did you handle some of the supply chain logistics that are out there? Because as you mentioned, we have, you know, Southeast Asia has everything, Taiwan, semiconductor, I guess you have BBTI, more like analog side of the, the equation, but how did you solve that uh, for your company? Yeah, I mean, the way we are looking at it is we do obviously partner with uh, certain um, Taiwanese companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, over over time, what we're doing is at a system level, um, as for as many components as possible, we use multiple sources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's important for supply chain resiliency, just like our customers should. Um, and then the partnership that we have with our foundries, uh, those foundry companies have a US uh, manufacturing location in development as well. So we want to make sure that in the long term, we are able to bring as much of the supply and onshore 
um, to the United States. That's great. I'm, I want to back up a little bit. You mentioned the work that you're doing with Texas A&M University, and you know they've been a great partner here to us here at the at the summit, which is great. We've had a lot of breakouts, and I assume probably participated in several of those. What is you know we we've heard a lot about what the Texas Blockchain Council is doing, what some of the legislators are doing. We had you know two of the the leading candidates, uh, RFK and and Vivek here uh, yesterday. Uh, so it's it's definitely a hot button topic. I feel like we've been through a big part of the toughest part of it, but not hearing about universities getting involved. This is interesting to me. What how are the universities getting involved? Yeah, they, I mean, obviously A and M is like engineering university. And, yeah. Farming agriculture, but yeah, NM NM is uh, known for its analog and power um, capabilities, mm -hmm. and so we are working with Professor Anjetty uh, at the Texas A and M University. We thought about, and mm -hmm. he and his yeah, colleagues are plugged in with ERCOT. Now, ERCOT wants to make sure, mm -hmm. like you said, Texas had these blackouts and uh, a surge in consumer demand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Bitcoin miners were able to bring down uh, energy usage by, I understand, north of a gigawatt to give it back to the consumers. And um, so as a result, the grid is much more stable, right? Right. Uh, but there are next level things that need to be done that we are doing some research work. Mm -hmm. uh, still in the research phase, we'll see if we can bring those to market in the next, uh, you know, hopefully... Yeah. In the next year or two or so. What I find fascinating are the little nuggets that are just so obvious and then like because you're thinking so technical that things that are so simple that make such a big difference. Like we just recently had a, a guest that was uh, a company, I think it's K&N, air, fil air filters, you know, recyclable or reusable air filters that add flow and cut costs by like 30%, which is, you know, with numbers, big deal. So other little of other little intricacies like that, as well as the big intricacies, like some of the, you know, many of the companies, NVIDIA and all the new technologies that they're coming out with. It's nice to see a original standard Bitcoin mining company also solidifying and, and fixing some places here in, in the industry. What are some of the things that you think people should take a look at and, and keep track of? And what are the big focuses that you're, you're interested in right now? Yeah, so in our company, uh, Bitcoin is one big initiative. We're looking at AI and Gen AI security as another big area, which, okay. which we think is going to be massive. Mm -hmm. Both these uh, will have a, a significant impact to the industry long term. And then we even within blockchain, there are other interesting technologies like zero knowledge proofs mm -hmm. uh, that will see adoption in the coming years. Um, so we believe these are super exciting technologies to work on. You know, we are bringing to bear capabilities we have developed over the last 20, 30 years in other industries, other internet infrastructure industries into this paradigm. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we are obviously very excited about all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one thing that we all know, if you are in the Bitcoin ecosystem, is the halving that's coming right, in, it's coming in May. It's yep. coming up, mm -hmm. right? And the halving is going to be uh, certainly a disruption uh, in terms of cost per mining Bitcoin doubles right, right. if you don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that becomes more and more important is energy partnerships. So I believe that as we go forward, Bitcoin will have to become, uh, continue this trend of being more renewable, mm -hmm. um, using uh, energy that's coming from natural gas flaring, methane flaring, those types of things. And, uh, and 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 essentially be a strong partner to the much stronger partner to the energy ecosystem uh, as we go forward. That's great. Uh, I there's one question I definitely want to ask you at some point talking about cybersecurity with AI as well as uh, mining. I don't know that we have enough time to answer it here, but uh, it it does end to the collaboration part of it. And I think that uh, you know, cybersecurity, while everyone talks about it a lot, they don't. They don't realize that it's such a fragmented market as well, and collaboration, I think, is really still key. But uh, unfortunately, I think we're going to run out of time. How would people get in touch with you if you're ready to talk to you more about like some of the innovations that you're doing? If they have old technology that maybe they're interested in upgrading or you know moving into your direction? Yeah, the simplest way is to uh, go to our website, which is www.aradine.com. A U R A D I N E. Uh, so please get in touch with us and we'd love to uh, respond to, 
to folks that are interested. That is so fantastic. Thank you so much for meeting me. Maybe we could do this again on the yeah. studio. <laughs> Thank you. That. Thanks, everybody, for another uh, segment, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Hey, thanks for watching The Merge. We've got a ton more stuff for you to watch on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere. Check us out.